Hey everybody, Jazzy here, back with year 15 of Thrill of the Grill, my solo Warly world over on Twitch. What the hell is Jazzy doing now? I've never seen him planting birch nuts at the beginning of autumn. Boy Jazzy, you are breaking the mold this year. Top quality, bro. And original. Hey, nothing personal, I just need that sweet, sweet 10 minute ad placement, right? Right? By the way, Action Q Reborn is the mod that lets me auto-craft, auto-plant, and auto-pick. Check out my client mods in the description if you're interested. I need the extra wood because my first project is going to seriously dip into the board supply. I'm setting up boats around the seaweeds I planted near Pearl's Island last year. The idea is to be able to hop around and shave all the seaweeds in one night, so we need boat bridges to move around there quickly. We need an anchor on each boat because we're close to a shoal and and both Malbatross and Narwhales can move boats with their waves. Plus, we want lightning rods covering everything. The big danger is actually not the boats getting stuck, but the seaweeds, because if one takes damage from the environment, they will aggro on me. Happened once on my wart world when one got hit by a wildfire during summer. Speak of the little devils, on the way back I spotted a narwhal, and now the horn is mine. You gotta hit them once and they poke this little hole in your boat with their horn. You just break the horn off while it's lodged in there. The narwhal goes back to being neutral. I actually don't have any boat patches, but the leak is small, so the boat health goes down kind of slowly, and I can just repair my boat with twigs until we get back home and I can craft some more patches. Another major project of the year is going to be building some volt goat pens. Now, I currently have four herds. Three generated naturally, and one I spawned from a spring hunt if I remember correctly. Now, one of these herds sits on top of an anemone in the auto goat farm, but the other three are just wandering around, taking up very valuable wildfire proof space inside the desert. We can't have that, so I'm ready to evict them permanently. But first, we need to build the house. So I'm digging up the outline of what will be four separate pens. At first, there will only be three herds moving in here, but eventually I might go hunting for another one and complete the collection. And then I did a handstand. Yeah, I think what happened was Rovius joined the stream and he's got this channel points reward where he does a handstand. So he was commenting about how I was playing as his in-game lookalike. And Kem says, but Jazzy's Warly can't do a handstand. It wasn't a direct challenge to me, but it might as well have been. Anyway, I couldn't let that slide, so there you go. That's cool, I was planning a belly button reveal for my 15,000 subscriber special anyway. You're welcome. Day 992, I'm cooking up a batch of meaty stew. More and more, I've been trying to cook less frequently and in larger batches. I find that it saves me a lot of time throughout the year to just bundle up ingredients rather than cook every time I get meat in the salt box, which happens after every hound wave. Then once, maybe twice a year, I'll cook up like a full stack of the dishes that I rely on. Supposing I eat one meaty stew and one mokeka every time I'm starving. Even if that is absolutely all I eat, then that food alone alone will sustain me for over a hundred days. So at this point, I really do not need to cook any more often. And I probably shouldn't be spending too much time in the kitchen because it just takes time away from doing other things like building. In the late game, you want to always be looking for ways to minimize upkeep. As your base gets bigger and automatically generates a lot more items, this becomes really important. Another thing I'm trying to do more is to use leafy meat in cooking as much as possible. It's got a one meat value like monster meat and large meat. And as long as you don't use two, you don't have to worry about making leaf loaf. So with a combination of monster meat and leafy meat, you already have two out of three meat that you need for stew. Then you can add either a large meat or two morsels or drumsticks, and this will help you go a lot further with your large meat. Day 994, I'm finishing up the birch nut tree harvest, and I'm also trying to heal Berger with some food. I don't know when I got it in my head that he likes jelly beans, but he could care less about them. Doesn't aggro on you when held doesn't eat them on the ground when dropped. Which is too bad because it would make a convenient way to heal him. Okay, the outline of the goat pens is done. I don't yet have all the turf that I want to use for the pens, but I can at least start on the walls. I'm using thulocyte walls for the corners that stick out from the center. For the concave corners, I'm waiting on the turf because I'm not totally sure how hard the corners will be with the different turf, and I want the walls to follow whatever that shape is going to be. The fences will be pipe fencing, which I generally prefer for animal pens. Shout out to June and Vacuum for their very generous contributions of gifted subscriptions at the top of day 1000! And shout out to all my viewers that have been along for the ride this whole time. A thousand days is over 133 hours. 
It's a big milestone, and I'm very proud of everything we've built so far in this world. At this point, I have no plans to stop building, and I have no plans to switch characters. Warley has been good to me, and it's been really convenient having access to his foods and his fast cooking all the time. One thing I did promise myself at a thousand days was a loot world. One resource that we will never see more of in this survival map is berry bushes. And I want more for building. They just look too good. We also did not get a lot of beehives generated in our world, and those do not regrow. And I don't feel like grinding Bee Queen over the course of hundreds of days just to be able to build more with bee boxes. So what we're gonna do is set up a brand new map and generate it with lots of berry bushes and more beehives and more cat coons. What? My chat likes kitties. I made a guide on how you can basically swap out your cave system with a loot world. Once you set everything up, it's really as simple as renaming two folders every time you want to switch. This can only be done with a dedicated server. I'll put a link to the guide in the description. It looks like the world generated nicely and connected automatically to our cave entrances. I'm not going to spend any time in the world right now, but I do want to grab some cave turf later this year. So for now, I'm going to put the cave system back in place. I'm experimenting with different ways to heal Berger every year, since he does take damage from poison birch nuts every time we harvest deciduous trees. So while he's sleeping, we're going to gently rub his blood matted fur with a full stack of healing salves. Can we use action cue for this very specific task? Yes, we can. This will heal Berger for 800 HP, but it's kind of expensive. I think feeding him large stacks of healing foods will eventually be cheaper, so I'll be experimenting with some other options for the yearly heals. The first and last class of the year is dead. I miss Winter's Feast already. We get an eyeball, a thick fur, and a mush light blueprint. I really want more lights. Heads up, there is a strong chance that eventually I will throw up the infinite glow cap mod or just re-enable Winter's Feast. But I'm kind of hoping that some new content on the horizon will give me another option soon. Okay, so I've decided that the dominant turf for the goat pens is going to be cave rock. It looks good with other desert stuff like boulders and spiky bushes. So now that I can see how the turf will shape the outline of the pen, I could wall off the inner corners. I'm going to use stone walls connected diagonally with a fence. This will also make little spots where I could potentially place doors later. For the secondary turf, I'm going to use red fungal turf, which will not prevent lure plants, but whatever, it looks good. Day 1016, I'm in the caves grabbing a ton of cave rock turf. I can make it at the tamper, but it's three rocks per turf, which, you know, I, I do it for convenience if we're talking like one stack of turf, but it's kind of expensive for such a large project, so I'll steal from the rocksters. Day 1021, I screwed up bad because I wanted to do a shadow piece fight, but I forgot a hammer. The hammer, it's always the hammer. So I'm sprinting back to base to grab one towards the end of the night and the hounds start growling. Screw this, this was not meant to be. I wanna fight Fuel Weaver, but I got an extra Shadow Heart kicking by the Forest Stalker. I'll just use that one for now. It's spring and I'm heading down to fight Fuel Weaver while things are wet. I get a Depth Swarm wave and I have Goat Jelly in a bundle, but I opted to use just the Morning Star. It's more convenient and a lot more economical. We're gonna use about 12% of a Morning Star. That's definitely cheaper than opening up two bundles to make a ham bath and eat some jelly. By the way, this does get occasionally asked, but no, electric damage from a morning star does not stack with goat jelly. So there's no point in using the two together. You'd actually do more damage with an electric spear. Stopping by the pseudo station to do a little bit of crafting while the ruins are empty before I reset them. I want to make some more star staves and lazy foragers. That's it. Okay, let's go fight Fuel Weaver. We missed the rain, so he wasn't wet for very long. But it's totally fine, because you know what? We get to cover the entire arena in Shadow Thurbles. That means we won't have to worry about the Bone Snare at all. So we're hardly gonna need Lazy Explorers. I'll keep a couple here just in case, but yeah, the resource cost for this fight just keeps going down. As usual, I'm gonna stick around for a minute and clear a few of the clockworks close to the gateway room, and then I'm gonna push off that obelisk and void walk all the way back to Hutch. Back home, I'm checking in on the Cat Coons. They're producing an interesting combination of flint and mole worms. Not a stick of butter to be seen. We might need like four cats in here to ensure that every butterfly gets killed because these lazy bums basically sleep 80% of the time. It is interesting that they are producing mole worms. Maybe eventually we'll have a colony in here. We're close to the end of spring and the goat pens are just about done getting turfed. 
I got all the rocky turf in place. I just need to fill a few more spots with the red fungal. Summer is starting up, but I have like two days before wildfires kick in, so I'm just gonna keep working on this for as long as possible. Antlion is dead on the first day of summer. I didn't eat before the fight, and by the end I'm starving. But it's fine. Really. <laughs> Viewers get worried when I start starving, but it's not as big of a threat as they think. The health loss from starving is very slow. If Warley has full health, then he can still survive for two whole minutes on an empty stomach. I typically eat a meaty stew and mulkeka to get full, and that restores 72 health. So I'm really not sweating a little bit of health loss from starving, and I'm not in a huge panic to eat when my hunger hits zero. The goat turf is complete! Now all it's left to do is the rest of the walls and fences, then we can move the herds on in. But that will need to wait until autumn because it is officially wildfire season. We are confined to the oasis desert for the next 10 days. So while we're here, I'm going to turf up this tiny zone and fill it with some birch nut trees and juicy berry bushes. The busted down wood wall trim looks really good, but I try not to overuse the look. For this build, I think it'll be nice and not too intrusive. I'm going to put some glass castles in the corners so I can wait to smash down the corner walls until I tuck the statues in. I'm spending a couple days just filling in some roads around the base. I'm sitting on a ton of cobble so I need to start moving it out of chests and into the ground. Trying to make two wide roads whenever possible, but it can be expensive doing that everywhere. I also finally decided what to do with this little zone right here. I got this mole worm that's been sitting in a bundle in this rock chest for hundreds of days, and we've been looking for a place to call home. Her name is Molly, by the way. We're going to give Molly a boulder, some flowers, and some berries. She will live here forever and never have to fear cat coon violence. At first she'll probably target some spots outside of her pen to dig a hole, but eventually, as I unload and reload the area, she'll pick a spot inside to dig. And it will never get moved after that. For stone walls, I definitely have a preferred skin for each height. For example, I like the default look for completely busted down walls. They have less of this thick stroke around them, and they don't look as scattered as the skinned version. But the skinned version of the default height and the max height, I cannot use enough. It's amazing how much a single skin can change the look of your build so dramatically. More walls and more wall skins, please. I'm growing two batches of giant onion, garlic, and pepper this summer. I can always use more of each of these, and they're super easy to grow together. Bundling the onions and grinding the rest. The last little touch we're going to put on Molly's home is a little nightlight. The fungal lamps have the tiniest hitboxes, and you can squeeze them into practically any space. Look how closely we're going to fit it in behind this boulder. It's perfect. You are you are very welcome for your new crib, Molly. If you are ever in need of sandy turf, please, please do not hesitate to ask. Last day of summer, we are back at that place where we do the action cue thing with the stuff so that we can grow into things and we can harvest the stuff and make the roads. I'm totally not stalling for that 10 minute mark. Next year, we are going to finally evict the goats. And then we're going to go on a little boss rampage. Quad shadow pieces, bee queen, dragonfly with no walls, and then we'll get an early jump on clearing the ruins in spring. I hope you're enjoying all the recap videos, and maybe we'll catch you live next time over on Twitch. Take care.